Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and today we're going to talk about Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition, and we're going to talk about Magic the Gathering, and how Dungeons & Dragons and Magic the Gathering are so tightly bound together now, it's it's hard to even explain it, Like, and I think it's much, much deeper than both communities understand, and, um, and the D&D community, Dungeon Masters and Dungeon Players are 100% wrong, and the suits got it right. The, the Wizards of the Coast suits were 100% right. These two products belong together, and they are inextricably tied to the success of each other going forward. All right, so let's talk about this. The reason why we're talking about this today is the Magic the Gathering 2021 Showcase, okay? So, it honestly, um, I think we have been incredibly ignorant as a D&D community about Magic the Gathering. Uh, there's been this idea that these are separate products, and the reality is they have been on a collision course for since 1993, right? So the history of Magic the Gathering is inexorably connected to, 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 to of Magic the Gathering is connected to Dungeons and Dragons, right? So Magic the Gathering made enough money to buy and flip Dungeons and Dragons like a house, which is exactly what happened, right? And then, then. You know, they brought in Ravnica and they brought in Theros into Dungeons and Dragons, and then the flip happened. Forgotten Realms was shoved over onto the, the, the Magic the Gathering players, and both sides have hated this combination. They like, uh, and I was I was one of them for a while, right? The D and D people hated Ravnica and Theros, and the Magic the Gathering players are hating the Adventures of Forgotten Realm, right? And so much so that Mark Rosewater top designer for MTG promised there would be no more Magic the Gathering Dungeons & Dragons premiere sets. Now, a premiere set is where it's a pre-release, it is the main event in, in Magic the Gathering, and it is an event that Dungeons & Dragons should have, but has failed to have, okay? There's nothing like a pre-release. If you've never been to a pre-release, you are really missing out as a gamer, okay? So when you go to a pre-release, you go, you sit down, and it's it's on rails because they've been doing it for 20 years, and basically they're like, this is the new product, you sit down as our guest, okay? You're going to pay us money for the product, right? It's usually about 30 bucks. You get six packs, but at that event, and it truly is an event, right? Wizards of the Coast is celebrating you as a customer. You are celebrating the product by giving, by coming, coming on a specific date and saying, I'm here for it, right? Here's my money, uh, and let's. I'm not just giving you my money and walking out of the store. This is an event where I will, I will enjoy your product immediately, and there's a celebration use of the product right from the gate. Okay, and this is like from a gaming perspective, this is why Wizards of the Coast has made 875 million dollars last year, and it and Dungeons and Dragons' greater competitor is 32 times behind it in revenue, right? Paizo made $25 million in 2020, uh, and um, and Wizards of the Coast made $875 million, right? 32 times more than, uh, than, you know, than its closest competitor, right? And so when you, so these, these pre-releases are the celebration of the product, right? And also, the store is getting in on it. And there are special cards that go there, and it, when you when you could, when you can wait a week later and just buy the product, right? But it doesn't make any sense to do that when you may when you go to the pre-release, you're given special promo cards. Most stores give special prizes out just from the store, right? Wizards of the Coast has given them special products to give out at the at the pre-releases as well, and there are players who play it who show up just for pre-release. And you can get trades, and also, even if you're just a regular player, often um, existing players who are seriously competitive players will literally hand you hundreds of cards for nothing, right? The commons and the uncommons. This happens in every pre-release I've ever seen. You know, people are like, they'll leave their bulk on the table, or they'll give it to whoever they know who wants it, right? It's it's crazy. There's nothing like it. And this, and I, I talk about this because we think we're removed from this as, as Dungeons & Dragons players. We aren't. Wizard Magic the Gathering has defeated Dungeons & Dragons in selling and promoting and celebrating its product in a way that is not even comparable, 
right? And we really need pre-release events for Dungeons and Dragons. I don't know how to get there, but I know we need them, right? We can't just sit back and continue to make 150 million, which is my guess of what of what percentage that 875 was from Dungeons and Dragons. We really need to get there so that our products actually make money for Wizards of the Coast, right? And I know a lot of a lot of players don't and Dungeon Masters don't care about this. They only care about their table, right? But you know, if you listen to this channel, we're beyond that. Like we we're we're, we're talking about Dungeons and Dragons at the industry level. We're talking about Dungeons and Dragons at the cultural level. We're talking about the Dungeons and Dragons beyond the table, right? You can leave that nonsense to the rest of the internet. We're talking meta. We're talking scale. We're talking history. We're talking future. We're talking culture. We're talking therapy. We're talking humans. We're talking beyond the table, right? And so, so basically, so what's happening is, so I just want you to understand this. So, so far we have Magic the Gathering, Adventures in Forgotten Realms. That look like a failure, right? It is very hard to see what the real, the real, the, the data is just not there. We don't know yet, right? So one of the things that, you know, so we're, we're moving forward and it's just so hard to tell what the reality is, right? And so we have Magic the Gathering, Adventures in Forgotten Realms. It's a set, it came out. Magic the Gathering players hated it, and uh, Rosewater promised there would never be another premiere set. It would never show up at a pre-release again, and no Dungeons and Dragons set would ever show up at a pre-release because it's a non-Magic setting. Okay, but at the Magic the Gathering uh, Showcase 2021, they just announced the third official Magic the Gathering set that has a Dungeons and Dragons setting. So you already know Magic Gathering Adventures in Forgotten Realms. What you don't know is there is already right now a Magic the Gathering Commander set, right? So that already exists, and the reason you don't know about and you don't care about it, right, is because it didn't go out through pre-release. So there is this product prejudice that is being held against Dungeons & Dragons by the Magic Gathering community, Okay. So it, it is a problem, right? But next year, get this, they just announced there will be another Magic the Gathering set that will have a Dungeons and Dragons setting. It is going to be the Dungeons and Dragons Baldur's Gate Commander set, right? And so, so there will be additional Dungeons and Dragons settings invading the Magic the Gathering world. The only difference is this time it will not get pre-release uh, treatment. Okay, but there are going to be additional Magic the Gathering settings going into. Uh, there are going to be additional Dungeons and Dragons official settings, Baldur's Gate, right? Which is actually a location within uh, Faerun, but it's still, you know, it's it's it counts. Um, so it'll be additional setting going from Dungeons and Dragons into Magic the Gathering, right? And it really, and I, you know, the more I look at this, the more I realize. One of the things, too, that's happening is everything that surrounds Magic Gathering, right? The marketing, the art, the layout, the design, all of it is better than Dungeons and & Dragons. And not even remotely close. Like, they they do ABs. They do, they do three products a year. And these products have multi-millions of dollars connected to them, right? Now, what, we, what you need to understand is what's happening is all of the shine all of the perfected marketing, art, design, um, all these areas where, where Dungeons and Dragons is behind, they're gonna get it for free, right? And Dungeons and Dragons scale and its ability to move product and its ability to reach, uh, to, you know, to print the game in different languages, its ability to just do things that no other, no other tabletop role playing game in the world can do is going to grow. Right, because every success that Magic the Gathering has, essentially, the, like as far as the logistics of the game, is given to Dungeons and Dragons for free. And get this, Dungeons and Dragons avoids the mistakes that Wizards of the Coast make for within Magic the Gathering. So we are incredible beneficiaries of Magic the Gathering, and only you know very like head in their stand uh, dungeon masters and dungeon players don't realize this and. The tightness of the braid between D&D and Magic the Gathering is going to increase, right? So just be aware of that. I just wanted to talk through that today uh, together. Uh, I think it's really interesting, and I'm just really fascinated by 
everything that's happening with uh, with Magic Gathering and Dungeons and Dragons. And to be clear, I'm super here for it. I'm, the more these things get braided together, the, the more happy I am. I'm thrilled, right? And just so you're aware, I'm I'm like almost I'm really, really, really changing the way I done play Dungeons and Dragons to leverage Magic Gathering cards. And I think you might do too in the future. The best Dungeon Masters will do it. All that's my opinion. I, I would love to hear your thoughts. Let me know in the, your uh, your thoughts in the comments below. Please consider liking and subscribing. And have a wonderful millennium.